Unsettled souls, and welcome to The Correct Views. Sam I.B. DeGange reporting for The Media Speaks. And uh, guys, we have a ton of news today, so I'm going to charge right into it. You might have seen my other posting, uh, North Korea Shima. Well, this is uh, North Fukuria. Uh, I'm running out of names to describe the insane but terrifying parallels between the two. Um, this is even worse. I mean, it could be argued that the Japanese, though any nuclear making is of any kind, be it for energy or weaponry, is a terrible idea, even though that is absolutely true in every way. Let's face it, who would you want to run one of these really bad ideas? Japan or North Korea? Uh, they've got power plants. They've got, uh, now it says North Korea may be on the verge of developing a nuclear missile capable of hitting Japan. I'll tell you what, and I haven't heard this mentioned elsewhere. If Kim Jong-un, un interesting, un intelligent, that un if he even hints at nuclear to Japan, they are going to flip. Not only has the United States nuked them twice, but they just suffered a quadruple meltdown at Fukushima. They've got melt-throughs. They've got melt-outs. Now, the black tar that is everywhere. I reported on the last massive Fukushima update that uh, there's another one coming next month in mere days. I reported that the black goop that's everywhere is actually the reactor core. Which one, one, or which one, two, one, two, three, four? We don't know. So now we got this tin horn dictator in these uh, posed pictures. It's on here at the Business Insider, enough to make you vomit. North Korea, which this month threatened to carry out a fourth nuclear test, may be closer than previously thought to putting a nuclear warhead on a missile. That's like giving a baby a hand grenade. Some experts say uh, that making a mockery of years of UN sanctions aimed at curbing such a program. The sanctions have devastated the people. Although it wouldn't have mattered because if we would have done trade with them, they still would have taken the money from the people and uh, done this quicker. So, I mean, you could argue that the sanctions slowed it down. I'm not anti-sanctions. It depends what it's for. Um, I could see why you would not do business with North Korea. I don't have a problem with that. North Korea has long boasted of making strides in acquiring a nuclear deterrent. But there had been general skepticism about whether or not they could muster the step of miniaturizing a nuclear warhead to mount on a ballistic missile. No one outside... Oh, no, I screen went zoom. Um... No one outside the inner circle of North Korea's nuclear program, it says, likely knows what advances the country has made. But there has been a shift in thinking by some who study North Korea full-time. How do you get a job doing that? Since it conducted a nuclear test in February last year, and amid on-off indications that it is preparing for another. Basically, for those of you that don't know, when... Communism took its swan dive, at least communism as it was in the uh, Cold War, took the swan dive when the wall fell, um, when Russia made a little more sense. Um, North Korea ended up almost totally isolated. North Korea started the Korean War, and they have mixed a kingdom, a monarchy, with communism, two of the worst ideas ever mixed together. Two terrible tastes that taste terrible together. And they've been running on this now for uh, three different administrations under one family. Their dead president is still their leader. He is still their president. Look it up. The isolated and poverty-stricken state, which regularly threatens to destroy the United States and South Korea in a sea of flames defends its nuclear program as a treasured sword to counter what it sees as U.S.-led hostility. Yeah, well, live by the sword, die by the sword. And again, I'm not saying America's a perfect nation, but it angers me greatly when just because America does evil, that we're going to say, well, you know, North Korea should do it. America does it. No, evil is evil no matter who is doing it. And this show will stand against it every time. 
There are now tremendous technological motivations to conduct a nuclear test as it races to perfect the technology to miniaturize warheads, the South Korean nuclear expert said. And, and these people are just unintelligent enough to nuke South Korea. And, uh, see, I would hope that they're smart enough but don't know if they are to realize the fallout from that is also going to hurt them. Um, they could have sent uh, a dirty bomb across the border. You could, it's not that far. You can look across the viewfinders. You can look right over. It shows them in the documentaries. It wouldn't be that hard. They haven't done it because I think they know what will happen to them. But this leadership is truly not all there. There are uh, quite a few fries short of a happy meal. And it's hard to say what they're going to do if they feel like they're pressured. And they feel like they're pressured even when they're not. The field deployment of a nuclear missile is eminent, said Kim Tae-woo, a former head of South Korea's state-run Korea Institute for National Unification, who also served as head of research at the state-run Korea Institute for Defense Analysis. Diplomatic sources told Reuters that China, North Korea's lone major ally, had used diplomatic channels to warn North Korea against a nuclear test, another possible sign that Pyongyang is considering such a move. Even China, one of the most despicable nations ever, they, they have more bad money printing practices than the U.S. did. That was on Drudge today. Um, just as I was going live, actually. Pyongyang is going to escalate what is already a very, very bad situation. We have the Chinese scum running into, uh, deliberately running into Vietnamese fishing vessels and sinking them. And in the middle of all this, you got this ridiculous Un family. Experts say the delivery vehicle of choice for the North Korea's first nuclear warhead would most likely be the mid-range Rodan missile which has a design of 800 a design range, excuse me, of 800 miles. Given the number of years that North Korea has been working at it, my assessment is that they can mount a warhead on a Rodong, Mark Fitzpatrick, director of the non-proliferation at the International Institute for Strategic Studies said. And there is no doubt that Pakistan can. And again, you know Pakistan does it. You know what? Pakistan and India have their own issues, and it does not involve North Korea. North Korea's troubles stem from what their leadership does, plain and simple. Um, it says, David Albright of the Institute of Science and International Security, based in Washington, cited the low yields for the North's previous nuclear test as consistent with the type of yield to be expected from the crude miniaturized warhead. North Korea is well aware of Pakistan and Iran's work for miniaturizing nuclear warheads for missiles, which originally were copies of the Rodong missile. So go read the article for more on that, but you get the gist. The worst leadership in the world in terms of, I uh, maybe might find some little squat country, but in terms of a, a rather major country, the worst leadership in the civilized, if you want to call them civilized world, is about to uh, have, a nuclear, have a nuclear weapon. That's, that's a great idea. North Korea, Shima. Uh, Infowars.com. The era of chimeras. Scientists fearlessly create bizarre human-animal hybrids by Michael Schneider. It depends where this goes. Again. A lot of people in the liberty uh, movement, as it's being called, tend to be very anti-science, in my opinion. Um, am I in favor of vaccines? No. I think the flu vaccine is a stupid idea. However, if you happen to be a porn star, if they uh, come out with a, uh, the, the uh, AIDS vaccine, you might want to get it. You might want to risk the mercury. It all depends what the situation is. We are an over-vaccinated society. Um, is a tiny bit of mercury good for you? No, but if you only get a couple of vaccines for the really major things, uh, that's, a, that's a decision you've got to decide for yourself. But this constant vaccination that we're seeing is a disaster. Well, I'm not, that's just one example. Um, I'm not totally against this, depending on which direction it goes. And it's just now starting. So, I mean, I just worry that this is going to lead down a road where people are pulling away from very good science, things that are going to save lives and extend lives for many people. Now, if this goes again, only starts sa saving the rich people, then I'm against that. 
But there are poor people that get the AIDS cocktail. So not all science is terrible. I mean, some people in this, I hate movement, it's such a stupid, pretentious word. But so many people in this movement seem to be anti-science, and that alarms me. Did you know that scientists are creating human-cow hybrids, pig-human hybrids, and even mouse-human hybrids? This is happening every single day in labs all over the Western world, but most people have never heard anything about it. So would you drink milk from a cow-human hybrid that produces milk that is almost identical to human breast milk? I don't know, I probably wouldn't choose to, but isn't human breast milk better for you than cow milk anyway? How would you interact with a mouse that had the brain that was almost entirely human? See, that kind of thing is not so good, but there are reasons. Uh, these are the kinds of questions that we will have to start to address as a society and scientists continually to in, continually continually create increasingly bizarre human-animal hybrids. Um, it says that the scientists justify this. And uh, again, I don't know if it's is justification or if it's true. The creation of human-animal hybrids by telling us what will help to cure disease and help end world hunger. But what if scientists discover that combining human DNA with animal DNA can give us incredible new abilities and greater extend our lifespan? That is good! Will humanity really have the restraint to keep from going down that road? Why should we? If we can hybrid something and it makes us live for 200 years, healthily, healthy. It depends. What are the risks with it? But to automatically out of the gate say that it's bad, I don't think, are you going to give it to soldiers to make them he-men and not give them to granny dying on the hospital bed? I'm against that. Does it give you cancer? I'm against that. It says in my previous article, transhumanist superhuman powers and life extension technologies will allow us to become like God. Again, who knows if it's going to go in that direction. I explored the obsession that transhumanists have with human enhancement. The temptation to take control of our own evolution will surely be too many, too great for scientists to resist. Maybe we're trying just not to die of cancers at ever alarming rates. Do you ever think of that? Um, it says, um, the human species began as a hybrid offspring of the male pig and a female chimpanzee. Well, that's some idiot scientist saying that we should do it now because that's how we came to be. I didn't say I was in favor of stupid science. That, that's ridiculous. But listen to this NBC News article. On a farm about six miles outside of Gambling Town, Jason Chamberlain looks over a flock of about 50 smelly sheep, many of them possessing partially human livers, hearts, brains, and other organs. The University of Nevada Reno, Nevada Reno researcher talks matter-of-factly about his plans to euthanize one of the pregnant sheep in the nearby lab. He can't wait to see the effects the human cells had on injected into the fetus brain about two months ago. If that means that you can grow a liver that might have saved my dad inside of a sheep, I am not against that. I'm sorry. I am not. If it's going to change him, if it's going to hurt him, or if it's going to make him something that is no longer human in some spooky scientific way, then I'm not in favor of that. But to me, this is like being afraid of uh, uh, you know not wanting to give blood because you, well, we shouldn't have someone else's blood in it. No, you shouldn't because... Maybe they were a vet. Maybe the vet donated blood to help save lives. If he was around DU, you're getting radioactive DU blood, so it's better off not to have it. But if you're dying after falling off of a motorcycle or something, then you do it, because the chances are it's going to be better than death. Um, I'm not against it, guys. Totally. It depends where it goes. Could I become totally against it? Yes, I could. Again, they talked about using this to create babies that don't have any illnesses. I'm against designer babies, but I'm not against eradicating disease from a baby. And if you can do that by growing a liver and a pig, then I don't have a huge problem with it. But if you're going to create, uh, you know, uh, you can create soldiers that don't, you know, maybe their brain is more animal-like and they're more likely to kill and you can strengthen their muscles by mixing their muscles with a bull. Yeah, I'm against that. 
So it's time for us to bring the ethics into the science, not take the science out of our lives. Um, Thenewspaper.com Indiana motorist sues after officer takes forced urine sample. That would mean catheter up the penis for you Lady Gaga fans. Yes, by Shazarazad's hat. Cops use catheter in invasive procedure against Indiana motorist whose blood level was below the legal limit. And I've been saying for a long time, uh, those who get DUIs are not drunk. Most of those who get DUIs are simply being used by the state to take money off of a perfectly sober person. Oh, but Sam, they say alcohol is involved in most accidents. Yeah, BS. If someone has a couple of shots and gets in a wreck, he is just as likely to get in the same wreck if he had no shots. Ridiculous. You can tell this by the whole tier system. If someone racked up a second, definitely a third tier DUI, you were ripped. This first tier one drink an hour BS, it's a money racket, and that's all it is. You are not less safe having two shots than you are at one. Ridiculous. Again, body weight, there's some, you know, everybody's got that horror story. My sister does a shot and drops her pants. Of course. Uh, what was it? A Tylenol killed Bruce Lee. There are always exceptions. And for that matter, somebody that's that sensitive to alcohol, one shot would do the same thing, and they'd pass the test. A motorist whose blood alcohol level was below the legal limit earlier this month filed an $11 million federal lawsuit against Sherville, Indiana. I hope he wins every penny for allowing its police force to use a catheter to forcibly attain a urine sample from him two years ago. Pause. I've never had a catheter, but I can tell you what I have had, and if you're easily grossed out, you might want to skip ahead a minute. My ex had Crohn's disease, and she picked up this horrible, horrible pneumonia that would not go away. She had had a, an incident with someone in her past, uh, bad. And we were concerned that due to that incident, it could be AIDS. When I went to the doctor, they asked if they could give me a full sexual test, whatever, blah, blah, blah. So I told them that they could, like an idiot. Don't ever do this. They took a needle with a Q-tip on the end. That's the only way to describe it and stuck it about that far up Mr. Happy. And I about went through the roof. She comes in and tells me that, oh, you don't have any sexually transmitted diseases. I said, what would you have done if I would have had it? She goes, oh, we would have had to have given you some kind of antibiotic. Friends, if you think you have chlamydia, and that's the test it's for, just go get antibiotics. Don't go and get the stupid test. It's the most miserable thing I have ever been through. It was sheer agony. I urinated fire for a day. It is the worst thing anyone has ever done to me. $11 million is the least this person should get. If it hurts even half that freaking bad. Oh, you'd have me on an assault of an officer. I would, oh my God, I'd kill somebody. On May 20th, 2012, William D. Clark and Alyssa Manson were driving through Shiverville on USA 30 at around 11 p.m. Office U. Matthew Jachik hit the lights on the squad car and pulled Clark for allegedly speeding. Smelling alcohol, Pig Jachik put Clark through field sobriety test and had him blow into a portable breathalyzer device, which you never know if it was calibrated correctly or not. A drug-sniffing dog was called in to search inside of the vehicle, though Clark gave no consent. Officer Ditchkick claimed Clark blew a point oil, an 0 0.11 on this primary preliminary breath screener, but no evidence was provided by Clark's attorney. Patrick B. McEwen filed a discovery request for records, so he lied about it. It was fabricated. And again, 0.11 is not that high. Um, I wouldn't push it much over that. If you do that, I'd be willing to say you deserved your Dewey. But th that's really not that bad. Plaintiff assess, asserts that, excuse me, that no proof exists that his portable breathalyzer test was in fact a .11. And that such proof, if in fact it ever did exist, would it preclude any need for further searches and seizures of plaintiff's personal bodily fluids. Good point there including his blood and his urine. And otherwise, if that had been the case, then they wouldn't have had to have done this if there would have been proof that he blew in 11. So he's lying. 
After being detained for about 45 minutes, Clark was taken to St. Margaret Mercy Hospital. Well, a nice Catholic hospital rums something up your penis. Yeah, wasn't there? They're caring and loving. Where he voluntarily provided a blood sample that produced a .07, that's legal, blood alcohol content reading, just under the .08 legal limit. Officer Bonehead Jikirk was unsatisfied with the result and demanded Clark provide a voluntary urine sample. After drinking a cup of water, Clark wasn't able, like a good little monkey, to perform on demand while being watched. So, you know, when the music played, the little monkey didn't dance for the pig officer. He asked for a second glass of water, but Pig Jakirk refused to wait and ordered Clark to be physically restrained in a bed while a nurse stripped Clark and used a catheter to forcibly extract fluid from his bladder. In some instances, if you would have an extreme aversion to this, like I would, they'll give you uh, IV, uh, no, not Adderall, that's the opposite. Oh, whoa, it's horrible for you, I forget the name of it, but it calms you down. My, I can't even think of it, and as soon as I get off air, I will. Um, it's like Versit, and it may give you Versit, although that might be too strong. It mellows you. It allows you to just relax, you'll get through this. No, they did it like Nazis here. Oh my God. These actions were painful, I bet. Painful, degrading, and humiliating, done against plaintiff's will and without a proper warrant, irrespective of any alleged probable cause, Mickey unwisely wrote. Clark was then taken in handcuffs and booked for driving under the influence of alcohol, a DUI. Clark argues the warrantless searches for violations of his constitutional rights, and he wants a jury of his peers to decide whether the painful fluid extraction was unreasonable. If the acts of the above-captioned defendants were intentional, wanton, malicious, oppressive, thus entitling the plaintiff to punitive damage, yeah, every penny of the $11 million. Friends, you're listening to The Correct Views. Sam I. B. reporting for the Media Speaks, reminding you to go to the Arcadia Grill in downtown Canton because their food is utterly delicious. Go, go, go. Um, go in there. Order up. Let them know Sam sent you. Make sure you go to the bar. If you're able to drink, by all means do because they remember to put, uh, what's that called? Oh, yeah, alcohol. They remember to actually make a drink. It doesn't taste like pop. Um, and let's face it, pop's so bad for you. If you're going to drink it, you might as well have rum in it. Also, look up the work of Mike McLaughlin. You can find him on Facebook.com. He writes some of the best short stories you've ever read, and he's selling them. Uh, he writes poetry. Go. Tell him I sent you there and enjoy his work because very, very good writer, and uh, we need to support the ones that we have in this country, the ever-dwindling number. American Dream Michael Snyder government plan would transform Israel into the world's first cashless society. Oh, you people that say that I uh, side with Israel and I hate the Arabs. Uh, you're going to be real happy here. Because Israel is being despicable. This is a terrible idea. A cashless society. They say they're doing it to rein in taxes so that they can monitor everything. Oh, that's a good idea. You get the taxes. But did you listen to the other end of that? They're monitoring everything. This is terrible. A cashless society is a society that can be hacked. And there's another reason. Um, if they did that here, I'm telling you, it would be time to go to a barter system. You're going to find uh, people doing all kinds of work in exchange for other work. People are not going to go for this. I don't care what Sweden or whatever it is is doing. Uh, they say they're down to almost no cash. This is ridiculous. This, um, this is horrible. The kind of thing you would see at the, in the Book of Revelations. Israel is really part of the problem in the world, uh, not the people, the government. Will Israel be the first cashless society on the entire planet? A chairman chaired by Israeli Prime Idiot Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, Chief of Staff, has come up with a three-phase plan to all but do away with cash transactions in Israel and thus further ruin his country. Individuals and businesses, it says, will still be permitted to conduct cash transactions in small amounts, at least initially. Oh, how kind. But the eventual goal is to force citizens to conduct as much business as possible using electronic forms of payment. In fact, it has been reported that Israeli officials believe that cash is bad, there's a link for that, 
because it fuels the underground economy and allows people to avoid paying taxes. But just wait until you see what they do next, you moron. It is hoped that requiring most transactions to be conducted in cash will reduce crime and help balance the national budget. Oh, of course. And once 98 or 99 percent of all transactions are cashless, it will not be difficult for the Israeli government or any government to go the rest of the way and ban cash transactions altogether. But it asks, is a cashless society really desirable? No. This is a question that people all over the world will have to start asking governments as they increasingly restrict cash. I don't bank. You want to know how I do it? Look up How to Live Without Banks, TheMediaSpeaks.com. This committee had a full backing of Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, and some of the goals of the committee included finding ways to increase tax revenue and prevent money laundering. Yeah, not prevent stealing, no. We just have to be a, a more intelligent thief, but you can steal more when you are. Great idea. Officials in the Prime Minister's office declared that around the world it is recognized that cash is a key payment of the illegal economy and money laundering. It allows a wide gap between reported and actual incomes with the corresponding effect on tax revenues. That's not true. In the hood, they use tide as a form of currency. Trust me, I live in the hood. By eliminating cash, the PMO said it will be possible to expand the tax base and prevent money laundering. The committee will study the issue from all perspectives and make recommendations, the PMO said. Again, I, my house is nice, but I can't in Ohio. It's a big hood. Now, the committee had been quite a few months to examine these issues, and they have now come back with their recommendations. It says, just this week we learned that a three-phase plan is being proposed a special committee headed by idiot Prime Minister Benjamin Idiot Yahoo, Chief of Staff Harold Locker, has recommended a three-phase plan that will all but do away with cash transactions in Israel. In other words, buy very small amounts of gold, very, very, in small denominations, everybody in Israel that cures this. Trade amongst yourselves, factor out the government. The motivation for examining, and buy Bitcoin and Dogecoin, the motivation for examining a cashless society is combating money laundering and other tax evasion tactics, thereby minimizing the potential tax collection and greatly expanding the tax base. This is important considering the enormous strain put on Israel's national budget by the army, healthcare system, and other public services. You guys can see where this is going. This is going to be a disaster. It says in Sweden, in good old Sweden, it is estimated that 3% of all transactions involve cash. It's not a good idea, people. It is a very, very bad idea. Speaking of very, very bad ideas, uh, those of you that know I do the dunce cap of the month, uh, they know I, you know I've announced a contest, and it goes on all the way until the $50 is spent. What $50? The Department of Education, and I'm going to announce this at every show. I've got two more to get to. The Department of Education were bad sports about getting their dunce cap, and they mailed it back to me. So now I'm asking everyone hearing my voice to let me know what your favorite charity is in my comment line and give me proof that you've done this in my comment line. Um, or the correct views at Hotmail.com since I let people download my work and I might not see the comment line. If you go to the Department of Education on Facebook and say, why did you send back the correct views dunce cap? And I gave it to them for supporting Common Core. I will, I will um, plug your favorite charity on this show and I will donate $5 to it. One email, one, one comment. Don't leave 10 comments thinking I'm going to give the entire thing to you because that's harassment. But leave it. Leave the comment. Let me know you left it. Let me know what your charity is. And I will donate $5 to it. And I will do it for 10 people till the 50 bucks is gone. That's what you get for not being a good sport on the correct views. Telegraph.co.uk. I got so many dumb D stories that I'm never going to be able to put them into just one, which is coming up also in mere days. So I'm going to give you a twofer here on dumb Ds. These are stories that are so stupid that I had to report on them. 
but the ones I have for the dunce cap of the month are even stupider, if you can believe it. Sex change drugs to be offered to nine-year-olds. Now, I don't care what somebody wants to do to their own body. Somebody might say my tattoo, this little keyboard thing that I have here, that is body destroying. You know what? Fine. Do whatever you want to to your own body. That doesn't change the fact that as uh, Mike, uh, um, what's his name? Michael Schneider. Michael, yeah, Michael Schneider. Michael Savage says on uh, Savage Nation, if a guy wants to get his schmeckle cut off, let him get his schmeckle cut off. But that doesn't mean that he is now a woman. That means that he is a mutilated man. I agree. But this is ridiculous. When I was nine years old, or I remember I was younger than nine, but I was, I was still six or so, I would draw a star on my head and pretend that I was Wonder Woman. That did not mean that you should cut my schmeckle off. This is ridiculous. This is why it's one of the two dumdies of the day. Children as young as nine are to be prescribed drugs which delay the onset of puberty as the first step towards a sex change operation, according to reports. Not only is that incredibly unhealthy for the child, but then when the child says at the age of 16 that he really is gay, they're going to say, see... This is stupid. The treatment will be offered by one NHS trust to children who are 